little play that we're going to do, Gulligan's Island Christmas. Before we get started, we do have just one, uh, one little announcement for our church family. Uh, for everyone that uh, picked an angel off the angel tree, please have your uh, gifts here Wednesday night so that we can get those separated and get all those put out so that we can return those to the school uh, at the designated time. And again, we want to thank you for coming and being a part of this. Now, I'll warn you, uh, I'm not preaching tonight, but it probably will last a little longer than an hour, so just get rested back and ready to enjoy it. And so we're going to introduce the cast to this uh, show and this play in a, a special way for you. So, Maestro, we just start our music. Sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a faithful trip that started from a tropic port aboard a tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailing man, the clipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. The weather started getting rough, the tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of fearless crew, the anchovy would be lost. The anchovy would be lost. The ship set down on the shore of this uncharted desert isle with Gulligan, the clipper too, the billionaire and his wife, the movie star, the professor and Been adrift days or weeks. All sense of time was lost. You're telling me 
And my compass was spin spinning every which way. By my calculations, I believe we've been here seven years. Oh, that's seven years without celebrating my birthday. Darling, we should all count that as a blessing. I say we didn't age at all since we didn't know when it happened. Well, buddy, you do look on the bright side, don't you? <laughs> we know how many years we've been here. And we know it's the Christmas season based on the songs on the radio, but what we have to figure out is what day is Christmas Day. The singer on the radio says I'll be home for Christmas. That's great for him, but what about us? Yes, the real question is not when is Christmas, but when are I going to get off this island? I've got a new bar to get back to. I miss my family's good old country Christmas in Alabama. The big old tree and the handmade ornaments. Why, well, Christmas isn't complete without hoe in, and I don't mean the brawl. That's silver and gold. <laughs> I love the cranberry sauce. I like homemade apple pies. You know, Clipper, I could make you a homemade pie right here. Carrie Ann, that is awful nice of you, but if I have to eat another coconut cream pie, I might just go mad. Listening to holiday tunes brings us little comfort, just a longing for what we can't have. Oh, Scarlet Bear, I'm sure somebody will find us. Love you, dear. It's been seven years, seven Christmases, all I want for this year is to be rescued. Well, and for my portfolio to be increased by 40% when I get back. We interrupt this holiday classic with an important news bulletin. The Coast Guard Authority, in conjunction with the FBI's Department of Missing Persons, has issued a statement regarding the seven lost people who took a leisure cruise aboard the SS Anchovy nearly seven years ago. Hey, that's us! Clipper! Sorry, Dean. The decision reached by both agencies concluded that it's highly improbable that those seven individuals could have survived after such a long disappearance. It has now been determined that the seven missing persons who took that fateful trip are deceased, and all efforts to find them have been stopped. We now take you back to your Christmas holiday favorites. Well, that's great. Stuck here forever. No thanks to you, Captain. Mr. Powell, Clipper did all he could. He and his fearless crew tried to save us. And without that, the anchovy would have been lost. Carrie Ann's right. We can't lose hope. If we lose hope, we lose our senses, and we give away our humanity. Maybe it would be good for us to celebrate Christmas again. We all miss it, and it might keep our minds from drifting to despair, even if Christmas is counterfeit, as Scarlett says. Counterfeit? Love, you're not referring to our Woodrow Wilsons, are you? No, Houston, not our $100,000 bills. Those are as real as Carrie Ann's wholesome song. I'm just saying that even if Christmas is phony, as Scarlett says, I'd rather have a fake Christmas than no Christmas at all. Christmas is a time of hope. And maybe it will help us maintain our sanity. I wouldn't look good in a straitjacket, dear. I agree, Mrs. Powell. I think it's very important we keep our mind on positive things. This could be fun. Clipper, do you think you could find us a tree to decorate? Yeah. It'd be my pleasure, ma'am. Oh, I can't wait to open my gifts. Oh, that is so true, lovey. You know, I love shiny packages filled with luxurious accessories. <laughs> I hope someone has a 24 karat Rolex under the palm tree for me this year. I stopped digging ages ago. I've just settled for a new pair of pants. Or a new shirt. I've had this one on seven years. Cooper! Cooper! You're never going to guess what? Uh, <laughs> news? What news? Oh, don't spoil it, dear. Wait till after Christmas, then tell him. Christmas? Is it really Christmas? I haven't celebrated that in forever. Gulligan, I see a red bucket, but did you catch any fish? No fish, Clipper. They weren't biting, but this red bucket latched on. And guess what else? What, my dear boy? There's something inside of it. Well, I know that sound anywhere. You do, Mr. Powell. Well, that's cold hard cash. <laughs> Maybe it's somebody's piggy bank. Gulligan, let me see that. No way! Gulligan, let the dean see the bucket. No, what's inside is mine. I just want to examine it for a second. Make sure you give it back. I will. Huh. Interesting. Definitely not native to the island. It had to drift from another shore. Huh. Very peculiar. There's a lock on it prohibiting us from opening it. Hey, I have a hammer or a rock. We can break it open. No, you will ruin my bucket. There, there has to be a scientific reason then for this. I think I know what it is. What? Back in the Great War, they used to disguise naval mines as buoys. 
And they would put them out in the ocean so the enemy ship would hit them. Funny. And I almost hit it with a hammer. That sound inside of it is not money. It's the trigger mechanism to set it off. Are you saying that that's a bomb? A bomb? My bucket's a bomb? We are very fortunate it didn't go off. <coughs> Leave, it to, Leave you. it to you, Dolly, to catch a bomb. It could be deactivated, but if handled wrongly, it'll go off. Then what do we do? We need to be, be very careful with it, carry it to the other side of the island, and bury it. I vote for Gogan to touch it. No, he found it after all. Yeah, that's true. Well, this pal Gogan shouldn't have to bear the burden on his own. Carrie Ann's right. This is going to require a delicate team effort to carry it over there. <laughs> I guess I better go get some shovels and bury it. Well, well, who's going to carry it? Well, I think we ought to put it at the end of Gulligan's pole. It seems stable in that environment. Me? You want me to carry it? Well, it is your red bucket. And you said you didn't want anyone else to touch it. That's just when I thought it was a normal bucket, not an exploding bucket. All this talk of exertion has got me a bit famished. Maybe we should eat before embarking on this excursion. <coughs> Quite right, Houston. Carry in, dear. Well, dinner will be served shortly. Without fish, all I have... It's <coughs> coconut chowder. Let me guess. Coconut cream pie again tonight. Yes. All I have is that for dessert. Oh. It's my specialty. If God intended for us to eat coconuts, he would not have made them so difficult for us to open. I only can work with what I have. I like them, Carrie Ann. Thanks, Gulligan. Dean, I think we should turn in for the night and deal with the exploding bucket in the morning. Yes, I, I agree. A pal operates best when he's fully refreshed. Yes, I agree. <coughs> and it will take me most of the evening to prepare our expedition attire. One must dress for success always. <laughs> it has been an emotional day. I'll say, first we find out it's the Christmas season, then we find out the search for us has been abandoned, and now we have to bury a bomb. Good night. Good night, Good night, Clipper. Good night, Dean. Come on, Lovey, let's go. Clipper, I think it's very important, I can't stress it enough, that no one should touch this naval mine until we head out tomorrow morning. I agree. I'll have my eye on you all night, Gulligan. Why are you worried about me? Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Dean. Is it true, Clipper? It's what true, little buddy? Is it really Christmas? Yep, and we're gonna do it upright. After all, it's been seven years. I can't wait to build a snowman. Gulligan, we're on a tropical island. Oh, I guess we won't be having a white Christmas after all. No, we won't. That's okay, I'll just build a sandman. <laughs> Whatever, Gulligan. But first, we've gotta deal with the exploding <laughs> red bucket. You know, or we might not celebrate Christmas as normal. It may be a bang or a boo. Oh, y'all again. <laughs> <laughs> Riding in the sand. Riding? 
me look. Are they love letters? No, someone wrote three words. Huh. Doom. Doom. I wonder what that could mean. Sounds like a breakup letter. <laughs> oh my. There's another one. It says, sacrifice. A sacrifice? Oh, Dean, what does that mean? Uh, I don't know. I know what it means. There is probably some island god on this island, and he requires a sacrifice. An island god? Probably looking for a beautiful starlet that must be thrown into the heart of the volcano. The offering of such a stunning creature would appease the island god, who more likely than not desires the company of such a charming damsel. <laughs> Dean, you don't think that's true. Carrie Ann, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Scarlet, oh, I think that's just a bit of a reach. Well, I wonder if he can be bribed. Hey, there's another word down here. It says, Emmanuel. Emmanuel! Did you hear that, Lovey? Emmanuel, our butler, he has come looking for us. <laughs> Perhaps he is trying to reach us. I'm sure he is lonely without us to wait on him to night. Dean, doomed, sacrifice, Emmanuel. What does that mean? Uh, first off, are we all in agreement that none of us wrote these words in the sand? No. Oh, my Gulligan, are you sure you didn't write these words? I'm positive. Even if I had, they wouldn't look that good. My penmanship is terrible. I can vouch for that. He writes terrible. Well, then the only logical conclusion is this. There is someone else on this island. <gasps> this is great. Hollywood needs its star. Christmas really has come to the island. What a gift. Miss Powell, hold on to that hope for just a minute. Until we figure out who wrote these words in the sand, we don't know if they're friend or foe. Based on the words they wrote, I don't think they're kind of the friendly kind. Hey, everybody, check out this crazy map. Oh, go again, take that off. Where did you find that? Over here in the bushes next to all the footprints. Footprints? Carrie Ann, don't worry, they're probably his own. I'm afraid not, Clipper. We're all wearing shoes. Whoever made these footprints, they're barefoot. And based on the indentations, I would say they were made yesterday. Well, could it be the Powell's butler? Our beloved butler, Emmanuel. He was in such a hurry to rescue us. He forgot his shoes. <laughs> I'm afraid not, Mrs. Powell. But I do think the owner of this mask is the ones that wrote the words in the sand. And that word, Emmanuel, I believe it's the key to the whole word. Maybe a code to get us off the island? Quite possibly, Scarlet. Or maybe he's just an ugly guy who wants to hide his face. Gulligan, would you please quit talking before you find something more worrisome for us to find? You mean like this? Exactly like that! Oh, I'm scared! Could it be Island Savages? Oh, I have to go find the perfect gown! What for? For the sacrificial down. ceremony, of course. Calm down, ladies, calm down. Let's not to jump to any conclusions until we do more research about this. We just, we've got to figure out what this means. And until we figure out this mystery, none of us should leave, go around the island by ourselves. I agree. <laughs> I need to go back to the hut and study in my library and find out where I've seen this mask before and see if I can decipher that word, Emmanuel. Gullin, put the mask and the spear back where you found them. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> We better go back before we get in lots of trouble here. We better, we better go on. Gulligan, beside me, no more finding masks. Y'all ready to go cut some trees? Let's go back and find our axe, okay? Yep. Let's keep everybody's mind off this, Captain, especially the ladies. You can count on me. Right now, my mind's pretty torn up about it, too. We don't need everyone panicking. Oh. Panic? Right here, Gulligan. Go <laughs> 
Thanks, Callaghan. Ladies, what about this tree? <laughs> this just isn't the same. Christmas can't be hot. Oh. We can't have palm trees and sand everywhere. We Christmas needs fir trees and and it needs snow and hot chocolate. We need cold that bites the nose and tickle and freezes the toes. <laughs> Mary Ann, please don't cry. Fur trees aren't the only thing missing from this island. Oh? I could use a good date. Date? We have lots of them. You want me to pick you some? Gulligan, those aren't the dates I'm referring to. Guess what? We're here and we need to get used to it. Carrie Ann, I think we just need to get used to being safe. I know I'm used to it by now. Sometimes I can't even decipher what's real and what isn't anymore. Mm, I guess you're right. This tree looks good. What do you think, Starlet? As long as I'm not cutting it down. Don't worry, ladies. The men will be handling this. Go again? <coughs> yes. Watch the axe. <laughs> the ladies have decided on that tree. Aye, aye, Captain. Okay. Now remember to yell timber before it falls, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. The good news is we can use these coconuts to make some more coconut cream pie for our feet. How's it coming, little buddy? Uh, I'm almost there. Ladies, you might want to step back. Santa! What? Santa! <laughs> Go again. You were supposed to yell timber, not Santa. But I saw We interrupt these tunes to bring you a news bulletin. The violent hurricane that struck the Hawaiian coast last night has left the popular resorts in shambles. In other news, the Salvation Army has experienced an influx and theft of their renowned red kettles. In an effort to track down these criminals, all red Salvation Army kettles are now equipped with GPS tracking devices. When activated, the stolen money for the needy can be found. This news bulletin is brought to you by Sherwood Fruitcakes. It's the gift that you can keep giving because it never expires. Now back to the holiday classics. Well, I guess I need to pick out a dress for our Christmas party. I've always wondered, Scarlett, how do you have so many dresses you never seem to run out? It's all about the accessories. A farm girl doesn't understand. I guess not. That's it. I figured it out. What, my good man? The word Emmanuel is translated from the Hebrew, meaning God with us. <gasps> oh, no, the out of God. I told you, and you all just think I'm good looks. Are you certain, dear? I'm quite certain, Mrs. Powell. I found the interpretation in one of the Hebrew scripture passages. I'm afraid you've lost me. Are you saying there are secret passages? Houston, you remember our house in the Hamptons had that bookcase that opened up into the library? Well, 
yes, that led to my rare stamp collection. Who would have known there was so much money in postage? Do you mean from the Bible? Of course. I admit I'm a man of science and not of faith, so I don't have a lot of knowledge about the situation, but I did find a copy of the Bible on the SS anchovy. I remember going to Sunday school when I was a little girl in my little town. All I know about churches is that they're always trying to separate a billionaire from his fortune. We used to get little gold stars for memorizing scripture verses. That's sweet, Carrion. I bet your chart was covered in little gold stars. How did you know? I just bet nothing left from you. Well, I guess the words couldn't have been written by a well-mannered servant with impeccable table manners. I, I, I'm afraid not, Mrs. Powell. Drat. I was hoping Emmanuel, our father, was coming to find us. Well, Dean, dear, what does it all mean? Well, the first word is found in comes from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. A Lord? Well, there must be referencing someone from the English Parliament. Huh, a sign? I wonder what sign. I'm afraid the interpretation has left us more questions than answers. Like, who wrote those words in the sand? What do they mean? And what purpose did they have? I still can't remember where I've seen that mass before. Dean, it's obvious. The sign was written in the sand to warn us. The island god is among us on the island, and a sacrifice is needed to appease him. Otherwise, we are all... Well, based on the limited information we have from those words, Scarlett, I think that's a good working theory. Well, thank you, Dean. If I remember right, the son they're talking about is Jesus. Oh, the little baby outside the church is in the nativity scene. Yes. <laughs> My first acting gig was the third sheep in the church nativity play. It didn't go well. Well, what happened? I found out I'm severely allergic to wool. What I remember is that Jesus went around helping people and performing miracles. Marianne, I told you, miracles aren't real. Dean, do you believe in miracles? Well, while I would like to believe in them, my scientific mind only can accept the things that are tangible and the things that I can see. Miracles, you can't see them. I trust my eyes. Here's your tree. Clipper, are you all right? Clipper, you shouldn't have dragged that tree here all by yourself. She's right. Who is that first friend of yours? Gulligan? He hasn't come back? See? I told you I saw Santa. <laughs> he called Santa Claus. I don't believe it. For the last time, I'm not seeing him. Or so. Or not. I think I would know. Then tell me, why do you have a red hat, a red suit, and a white beard? It's a costume. Why would you be dressed like Santa Claus? The, the more important questions are, who are you and how did you get here? Well, if you would untangle me, I would gladly answer those questions. I have a few of my own. <laughs> Gulligan, untangle the band. No way! You, he put up an awful fight that I was real and it had to go your way! Oh, Gulligan. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> See? The beard is fake. And this is a costume. It's a rental. Although I doubt I'll be able to get my money back, though. We apologize for the boy's lack of manners. Not everyone on this island is showing proper etiquette. This is an island? Yes, it is. Deserted? Other people haven't left yet. Well, we've seen evidence of others, but there's been no definitive proof. <laughs> Sorry about catching you in my fishing hole. I'm Gulligan. And I'm Clipper, or rather, Captain Clipper of the SS Anchovy. And I'm Houston Powell, sir, the billionaire. And I'm his wife, Lovey. And I'm the Dean. I'm the Libby Star, Scarlet Mummy. And last but not least, I'm Carrie Ann, and we are all here on Gulligan's Island. They named the island after you? Yeah, I was the first to set foot on the beach. Did you say you're the captain of the SS Anchovy? Yes, what's left of her? You're the seven missing castaways. I read about you in the papers. I think even Dateline did a story on y'all. This is amazing, you're alive. Well, we've been very fortunate to be able to survive on the resources we found on the island. Now that you know who we are, who are you? Well, my name's Jonah Hale, 
and I work for the Salvation Army, what you call a bell ringer. I, I try to get people to donate money in my red kettle, normally loose change. <coughs> we use the money to help the poor and needy around the holiday season. Okay. Uh, we're a Christian organization. I'm noble, and you just ring a bell? Yeah, it gets people's attention. That and a lot of us dress up like Santa, hence the outfit. Well, now it's all making sense. Well, how did you get here? Well, I was stationed in Hawaii, which sounds amazing at first. I mean, who wouldn't want to be ringing their bell on the Hawaiian beaches? That is until you realize you got to wear this suit in the heat. <laughs> Hawaii? That means he came from the Pacific. That's our favorite location. I was just ringing my bell down the pier when all of a sudden a violent hurricane out of nowhere came and a giant wave took me and my red kettle out to sea. Scary. Then what happened? Well, it was really just all a blur. I was tossed around and I must have blacked out because the next thing I knew I was clinging onto a log and I guess I drifted a couple of days till I landed here on the island. That's a miracle. The good Lord no doubt was looking out for me, but if y'all have all been here seven years, it don't look good. So good for me either. You said good Lord. Well, what do you mean by that? My Lord Jesus, whom I serve. We've been here quite a while. Other than the seven of us, we haven't seen any other people on here. You're the first here. Did you mention a red kettle? Yeah, uh, it's what people don't put their money in. Did it happen to have a padlock on it? Yeah, it was a gold one. How big do you think it was? I don't know. Size of a bucket? Beach pail, maybe? <laughs> Are we going to get to have a Christmas party? Since we've been talking about Christmas. Well, I suppose we can have a Christmas party. And I suppose we'll have to add one more invitation to our Christmas party, Houston. A Christmas party? Well, yes, we pals love to celebrate. We didn't know it was Christmas until we heard Christmas carols on our radio. You have a radio? Yep, it's the only source of the outside world. How have the batteries lasted that long? Well, the Dean found a unique way to power it using bamboo, coconut, and an exercise bike. If you can figure out how to do that, how come you can't get everybody off the island? <laughs> Just believe us, we tried. <laughs> we are excited to celebrate Christmas once again. Christmas party? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, Don't celebrate. And you know what? Maybe you can help us celebrate by uh, decorating our tree with us. We know it won't be the same as back in the state, but if we try our best, maybe we can imitate the feeling of the season. You know you can celebrate Christmas anywhere. Look, I admire your courage, my man. I really do, but you can't expect us to deceive ourselves into thinking that Christmas can be the same here on some deserted island with no phones, no lights, no motor cars, not a single luxury. It's like Robinson Caruso. It's primitive as can be. Well, I think you all have primitive priorities when it comes to Christmas. But since I'm new here, I'll try not to get a disagreement. Wait, I forgot. My phone. My phone? Yes. You can call 911 and get us rescued. Uh, there's no service. Wait, 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 wait. Let's get back to this kettle we was talking about. What's so important about it? Well, the red kettle, they put GPS tracking device on it. How big was it again? About the size of a bucket, a beach bell maybe? <gasps> He's talking about Gulligan's bucket. The naval mine? You found it? I think we did. Y'all, that's great. We can get out of here. How about blowing us up? No, what? Never mind him. How can that puppy get us off this island? Well, remember, I just said it had a GPS tracking signal on it. So we could turn it on. And when we activated it, <coughs> the authorities would come looking for us. This is incredible. We will be able to celebrate Christmas at home after all. Well, there's just, there's, there's a problem. We'll, we'll still invite you to our Christmas party, uh, all of you. Yeah. We buried it. You what? Uh, you see, he thought it was about. Now, again, it doesn't matter why we buried it. All that matters is because of my forethought, we know exactly where it's buried. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's just go dig it up. Well, 
we might have another problem. You see, I'm afraid that the volcanic seismic activity from the island may interfere with the GPS signal. We can't let a little problem like that stop us. Well, all we'll have to do is get it further enough away from the island so that the, G the volcanic seismic activity doesn't interfere with the GPS signal. We can build a raft. We well, can just all go get on it, turn it on, and they'll come looking for us. Won't we get arrested for stealing the kettle? Who cares, Belligan? We might have your eye telling what happened. It sounds like we've first time, for the first time we've got a viable plan. <coughs> I'm we got to get our shovels, Belligan. we got to go dig it up. Let me help you, too. Well, very well, Carrie Ann. You can with, come with us. With all luck, we'll be celebrating Christmas tomorrow on the mainland. <laughs> all right. Come on, Belligan, little buddy, Carrie Ann. Let's go dig up that kettle. We can go home. Yeah, I think this is a miracle. Y'all not landing on our shore. No one else believes in miracles, but I think it was a miracle. I, I think God has turned this possible tragedy into a triumph. Look, you, you all can believe what you want to believe, <laughs> but miracles, they're purely coincidence. Well, I respectfully disagree. There is some scientific reason for all of this. Come on, little buddy, let's go home. <laughs> Been digging for hours, Clipper. It's nowhere around here. I don't understand it. The dean marked it with a red bandana. Why can't we find the tree? Um, that's that's because you're using it, Clipper. What? <gasps> Clipper, it's in your hand. <laughs> How did I get this? Golden, you handed me this. Um, well, you see, when we were looking for a tree for the ladies, you you were just kind of sweating, so I wanted to be nice. Oh, Golden will never find it. Clipper, are you all right? I'm getting dizzy. Oh, you might need to sit down. Here you go. Thanks, little buddy. <laughs> go again! <laughs> I <I'm trying> know. <laughs> Man, he's going to shoot us. <coughs> he's got a gun. <laughs> we got the raft built. Yeah, I added the finishing touches. It's a fine craft, It's a fine craft, Captain. I believe you will be pleased. So, where's the red kettle? Uh, Gulligan took the red bandana off the tree that marked the spot when we were out tree hunting. And as you can tell, we dug up the whole area and we haven't found it. <coughs> I was just trying to do the right thing. Sorry, guys. Hmm. I can see that. <sighs> oh, you really messed up this time, my boy. We can search this whole island for weeks, months, and still never find it. We will never get off this island to celebrate a real Christmas again. Without that kettle, I'm trapped. We are in the same boat as you, except you've only been here a few days. Try years. That's just it. You're all used to each other. Thought of me spending the rest of my life with y'all drives me insane. <laughs> Why, whatever could he mean by that? Miss Powell, you and your husband, the entire world revolves around your well. Oh, guilty as charged. And Dean, you think science has answered everything. You put all your trust in it. Of course it is. I trust my eyes. Starlet, you may be beautiful and famous, but you're superficial and empty. You, you live your life fake. Well, most of the time I'm acting. Well, then stop. Carrie Ann? Me? You're at least thoughtful. But you've got Christmas all wrong. It has nothing to do with Christmas trees or cookies. The real meaning of Christmas can't be bought, sold, advertised, or decorated. What a mean thing to say. Now, you listen here, you little <laughs> bell ringer. And Clipper, you're so caught up with what everyone else feels, you haven't stopped to think about how you feel. Your entire belief system is based on everyone else. What, what about me? Oh, Delican, I don't know where to start with you. This Santa can't fix your problems. <laughs> are you leaving us? Yeah, why are you backpedaling? I'm getting out of here. Y'all need saving, but not from this island. There's only one person that can save you, and I don't think your heart's ready to receive them. Where are you gonna go? I'm gonna go take this, go rat home, and go sell out of here. What? You don't know where you're at. How do you know where you're gonna go? I'd rather take my chances out there than stay here with y'all. <laughs> not if I stop you. Clipper, you'd have to catch me first. Go again, get him! He's gonna take the rock by bolts and deceive the board high. No, don't worry about him. He's making a terrible mistake. Stop, Ralph, throw! Gilligan, if I were you, I'd 
I try to find the true meaning of Christmas. It's not what your friends think. You can't leave. Goodbye, Duncan. God bless. Oh, yeah? Ow! <laughs> Good shot, little buddy. Our Ralph, it's drifting away. Don't, don't, don't worry about him. He'll just wash back up with the tide in a day or two. You know, for a Christian, he wasn't very nice. Uh, I, I hope we never see him again. He had nothing good to say about any of us. That's not my heart this time, guys. There's that bump, bump, bump sound again. I hear it this time, too. After this, your heart beating again? No, Mrs. Powell. Run, it's the drums! <laughs> <laughs>
book Isaiah, the prophet, that he prophesied that the king would come and he lived and then it took the past so it is true. The events were recorded by Matthew and Luke. It is right there for your eyes. In a little book called the Bible. I want to believe, but I never believed anything was real. He is real. His creation is everywhere. His blood flows through everything and gives life to everything. Just open your eyes and look. Well, I'm lying. I'm not taking a closer look. No need to be close to it. Just look. He is there. You know, I've never told anybody this, but that night on that ship, when it was tossing to and fro, I felt like some force intervened on our behalf and saved us seven years ago. I felt it too, Clipper. I believe. Oh! 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 oh. Then, my little skinny buddy, by faith through Christ are you saved! Woo! Not of yourself! Oh, no works you can do! Hallelujah! I have looked at it all wrong. I kept trying to make Christmas perfect to have a real Christmas. But what I thought was genuine was actually keeping me from the truth. Houston, I feel a strong conviction in my heart that this real Jesus is someone I need to save me. I need this Jesus. My love of money has blinded me. Well, honey, you're not going to put stock in what these, excuse the phrase, savages think, are you? When I know something is true, Houston, I know it. And I feel this... Jesus reaching out with a gift that doesn't cost us anything. Well, I mean, I'll put my faith in the almighty book. It has worked for us how for centuries. Look, this may be a nice theory. It may even be a working theory. But I'm going to need more data to make a proper judgment. Faith is evidence of the unseen. If you just confess that you are sinners and believe that Jesus will save you from your sins and that he is your savior and God's son, then you will all be saved from the impending doom. I feel lighter, like a great weight has been lifted off my shoulders and I don't need to pretend it's real. I'm really experiencing it. Thank you for showing us the true meaning of Christmas. <coughs> Not anything from a guy in a red suit can top this. And we didn't even eat you. <laughs> Houston, I do hope you will reconsider. Sorry, lovey. My mind is made up. Uh, Dean, what about you? Are you sure you don't want this free gift? Yeah, we surely don't want you to face the impending doom. Ladies, I appreciate the sentiment. But you ought to know by now, I think everything's through. No, no need in trying to convince them of making the right decision. God gives free will to all. It is, what, it is, it is a choice that they must make, and they alone. <coughs> we have done our mission the best that you could. Yes, come, for we have prepared a feast, a Christmas feast. Back at your hut of the best wine and dishes, it is our gift to you this Christmas. A feast? Now that I can accept. But you have changed your mind? No, 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 no. <laughs> Jane, I suppose you won't change your mind. No, not at all. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but all this fear and trembling has given me quite an appetite. Clipper, I thought you always had an appetite. Very funny, little buddy. What a turn of events. I'll say, we're very fortunate. From looming tent death to jubilant life. Come, my new friends, and enjoy the Christmas feast and the true meaning of Christmas at your hut. <laughs> Nothing from a guy in a red suit could top this. <laughs> I agree, little buddy. I'm sorry I get so frustrated with you so much. I'll try to do better. Thanks, Clipper. Come on, everyone, before our food gets cold. <laughs>
die for. Those may not be the best choice of words, Houston. Oh, we'll have to fit them handsomely then. And we are positive that this meat we are eating is indeed wild boar. Is boar not to your liking? Everyone, don't worry. It's pork. I checked. <coughs> Would you like some guava gravy? No. <laughs> Are you everything okay? Everything is delicious. I just swallowed a fly. Okay. I know we were all hoping to be rescued for Christmas, but I feel that my soul was rescued, and I am thankful. Jesus and his rescue mission to save us from sin. I'm just so happy. Me too, little buddy. Well, I think a toast is in order to our new friends. You're here, Dean. A great gesture, and one that will hopefully move us on to a new topic. Allow me. To our one new neighbors, to our newfound faith, and to our celebration of the King of Kings. Cheers. 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 Jesus, I'm confused. They didn't make toast, but I see no bread. They call us barbarians, you liars. <laughs> Please enjoy the rest of your feast and do not hesitate to call upon us should you need anything. We are your neighbors. But please don't hesitate. But please, but please don't like. Overstay your welcome, yes, yes, and be like those those neighbors that are all like, you know, it's kind of hard to describe, you know, like they don't know when to leave, they can't take the hint. You get it? You see? You see what I mean? Don't worry, we won't. Wait, wait, I have a question. Already. You wish to accept a free gift, Houston? No, no, not at all. I'm wondering, do the Londians know how we get off of this island? Why didn't we think to ask that before? Of course. You? Why would you want to leave? This is paradise! <laughs> Merry Christmas, you castaway strange little morons! <laughs> Merry Christmas to you! Did they just Mama. call us stupid macaroons? I don't think I want to argue with them if they did, Lovey. We interrupt your holiday festivities to bring you a news bulletin. A bell ringer for the Salvation Army named Jonah Hill, who has been missing for three days, has been found. He was found when the raft he was on drifted towards cell phone service, and with only 1% left on his battery, Jonah Hill could make the call that saved his life. That is wonderful. Yeah, but he wasn't very nice to us. Yes, but Jonah did speak the truth, even if we didn't want to hear it. You know what this means, don't you? Please enlighten us, Dean. Despite his rude rhetoric, Jonah was a decent fellow. I bet he told everyone where we was at. Why, well, I bet the surf party, uh, the rescue party has already been dispatched. Unfortunately, Mr. Hill received a harsh blow to his hip, resulting in mild amnesia. He has no memory of the past week or where he was or how he ended up on the raft in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> the Coast Guard are calling it a Christmas miracle. Well, I wonder where that happened. Well, could it be that someone hit him in the head with a coconut? Rescue me, you gave my heart a song to sing. A 
I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Moses had stage fright. And David brought a rock to a sword fight. You picked 12 outsiders nobody would have chosen. Then you changed the world. Well, the moral of the story is everybody's got a purpose. So when I hear that devil start talking to me, saying, who do you think you are? I say, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history as another blood bought, faithful member of the family. And if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me. To see nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history as another blood bought, faithful member of the family. And need they all forget my name? Well, that's fine with me. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Because I'm just a no. Trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus.